Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy, all the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. Thanks so much for listening. Today, we are talking about everything from another storm heading for the U.S. to a Hollywood mogul in trouble and even a little Netflix news. Plus much, much more, all in less than 10 minutes. I'm Erica Mandy. Today is Friday, October 6th. You ready? Let's do this. More talk in D.C. now about gun control after Sunday night's mass shooting in Vegas. Even the NRA, the National Rifle Association, is A-OK with more regulation. Well, at least on one particular thing, the bump stock. Remember, that's the device the shooter used to basically turn his rifles into machine guns and fire bullets faster. The New York Times reports the NRA and some lawmakers on both sides want to see stricter rules on those bump stocks. This is a big deal since the NRA is usually against any gun control. But here's the flip side. Some gun owners are rushing to get their hands on bump stocks before they could be banned. Fox News talked to a couple stores running low or even selling out. The report says bump stocks were originally designed to help people with limited hand mobility. Also, there's word the shooter, Stephen Paddock, may have thought about attacking other crowded areas. He apparently booked a room at the Lollapalooza Music Festival in Chicago back in August, but never showed. And he researched hotels around Fenway Park in Boston. Investigators are still looking for a motive, talking to Paddock's relatives and looking at his electronics. But so far, they say there are still no obvious signs of extremism. One more thing. The full list of names of all 58 people killed is now out. CBS News has many of their pictures and stories, so I'll be putting a link in today's show notes if you'd like to read more about them. Another storm is heading toward the Gulf Coast. This one is called Tropical Storm Nate, and it's expected to hit the U.S. over the weekend. The storm has already affected parts of Central America, like Costa Rica. The BBC says at least 20 people have died. Today, it's supposed to make its way over to Mexico. Then, the Weather Channel reports Nate will likely hit somewhere between Louisiana and Florida early Sunday. It will hit either as a tropical storm or it could get stronger and turn into a hurricane. There are still effects from Hurricane Irma that you may not have realized. Your orange juice may soon taste more sour than you're used to. The hurricane hurt Florida's citrus crop, and now Bloomberg reports it means U.S. companies may have to get up to half of their OJ from Brazil instead, where the orange juice is less sweet. All right, you know the law that says your employer can't discriminate against you for things like race, religion, and sex. Well, should that include transgender workers? The Obama administration had said yes and that it does. But the current U.S. Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, just clarified that he doesn't think so. He argues gender identity is not included in the federal civil rights law. He says that doesn't mean transgender people should be treated poorly, just that it's not in the law. Transgender rights groups call it cruel and they plan to sue. CNN says this will likely become one of several LGBT issues that could go all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. President Trump wants to take another look at the Iran nuclear deal. The Washington Post says he's expected to announce next week that he'll decertify it. And that means basically that Congress will have to deal with the deal and decide how to move forward instead. CNN says this puts a dent in the process, but it doesn't completely scrap the thing. Reminder, the Iran nuclear deal was put in place by the Obama administration. It lifted sanctions against Iran, and in exchange, it's meant to stop Iran from making nuclear weapons. We'll see what the president really does next week. All right, other things people may be talking about today. One of the most powerful men in Hollywood is taking a leave of absence from his own company. Why? The New York Times reports Harvey Weinstein is accused of sexually harassing women for decades, and one of the accusations came from actress Ashley Judd. It also says he settled complaints with at least eight women. Weinstein co-founded Miramax, the company behind movies we've all heard of, think Pulp Fiction and Goodwill Hunting. He apparently apologized, but his attorney says the Times story is false, and there's now word he plans to sue. More fallout from football player Cam Newton's comments about a female sports reporter. He just lost a big sponsor. The yogurt maker, Dannon, dropped its endorsement deal. Cam Newton, who is quarterback for the Carolina Panthers, said it was funny to hear a woman ask about routes, which is a football term. Newton apologized in a video posted to Twitter last night. He said his words were extremely unacceptable. 
By the way, people started looking more into the reporter involved in all of this, and they found tweets from a few years ago that many call racist. So now that reporter, who works for the Charlotte Observer, is also apologizing, saying there's no excuse. The Major League Baseball playoffs are officially underway. They started yesterday with the American League. Today, the National League plays, including last year's World Series champs, the Chicago Cubs. All of the matchups are the best of five games. The winners then go to the League Championship Series, and after that, the World Series. Parents, heads up, this one's for you. Toys R Us is recalling thousands of toys. CNBC reports Bruin infant wiggle balls could break and be a choking hazard. Parents can take them back to Toys R Us for a refund. All right, don't be alarmed. You may notice a bump in your Netflix bill soon. Bloomberg reports the cost of the most popular Netflix plan is going up from $10 a month to $11 a month. The premium subscription will go up by two bucks and the basic at $8 will stay the same. The company says the higher prices will help pay for a bigger TV and movie budget. Expect the increases to kick in starting in a couple months. The finalists for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame are out. The 19 nominees include Rage Against the Machine, Bon Jovi, Radiohead, and LL Cool J. Billboard reports a band or artist must have released their first recording by 1992 to be eligible. The newest Rock and Roll Hall of Famers will be announced in December. And that's it. You are officially in the know for your Friday. Check out today's show notes on thenewsworthy.com to read more about any of the stories I talked about today. Also, find me on Instagram and on Facebook over the weekend. Just search Erica Mandy and it should pop up. All right, we'll talk again on Monday. Until then, have a great weekend.